Good day, dear students. Let's begin our next lecture. Today we are going to talk about abbreviations in translation. So I do hope that you will get some useful information from today's lecture. As you know, lexics, lexics of language grows at the constant rate, which Turner estimated at the approximately 600 words a year. So that means yearly 600 words appear into the different languages of the result of technical translation or development of um, some kind of sphere. For example, in particular, the internet and mobile telephony can be example. Each year, a lot of neologisms and terms enter to our language in this field. And during conferences, this kind of variations may cause some kind of difficulties for interpreters. And of course, the interpreter will feel success during consecutive or simultaneous interpreting. Some scientists define 30 types of abbreviations, but some just uh, divide them into several uh, numbers, maybe two, maybe ten, maybe seven, different kind of approach which uh, we can see uh, just analyzing the res uh, results of research. The use of abbreviations is a re relatively new linguistic phenomenon. It, it appeared, it, it was developed in the late 50s and 60s, as well as abbreviations can uh, be classified into the followings. Sometimes uh, we can see or meet abbreviations connecting with the names of professions, art groups, and special organizations, as well as technic techniques and names of the technological equipments. Or they can be uh, related to mobile telephony, or they can be closely connected with educational institutions, such as BA, PhD, GSC, AMA, etc. They aim at facilitating pronunciation, writing, typing, or printing. So here, we shorten the speech and abbreviate some kind of long sentences, long phrases, very long uh, famous uh, names of organizations or places and so on. Sometimes, some abbreviations are pronounced letter by letter, such as CPU, L F C F L C M. We pronounce them letter by letter. Sometimes we read, read them as one word, UNESCO, UNICEF, because of the uh, structure of morphological and phon phonetical model or structure of the sentence. Because uh, in uh, between each uh, consonant, we can uh, meet vowel sounds. So sometimes we can see unpronounceable abbreviations such as USA as well as pronounceable ones, RAM. So it depends on the morphological and phonetical sense, uh, just the structure of the, of the word. Here we can see classification of abbreviations. The first one is single word is used, initial word is used, a C or D, C for cushion. X is a nickname of, for some kind of school in Paris. Next one, reduction of a group of words uh, to the first two letters of each concept. South Western Township, Soweto, shorten, is short for. Soweto, South Western Township, so they abbreviate the, some, some phrases. Sometimes, reduction of concept of a group to equivalent of syllable. Comsat, communication satellite, a, 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 a usernet, user network. So they reduct some kind of uh, syllable and they join them together. Reduction of the initial of just one word of the group. O level can be example. A full name is ordinary level. So only the first word is shortened and abbreviated. Transcription of the abbreviation. MC stands for, for MC, Master of Ceremonies. DJ stands for disc jockey, so sometimes they abbreviate. Reduction of a group to the initial of the first concept and the first syllable of the second one. M-Tech, Master of Technology. So M 
tech stands for master of technology. The first one is abbreviated, second one is only first syllable is read. Preserving a conjunction. Sometimes we add conjunction between two shortening words or letters. D and D, drunk and uh, disorderly, that means. For short, it is D and D. D is connected with conjunction to the second D. Preserving the abbreviation in its original language. FAO uh, in English as well as FAO in French also. FIFA in English as well as FIFA in Uzbek and in Russian languages. So here they preserve original name. When we speak about laser and Cuba, they are the words uh, that, are, that belong to abbreviations, but nobody notices them. They are read as ordinary words. People use it to read them as one word, but they are abbreviations, laser and scuba. So when we speak about translating abbreviations, we can say the following to our students, to our learners. Uh, as we know, for example, in Arabic language, they never shorten, uh, use shortening because all letters are in connected form. So that's why um, before translating abbreviations, you should think about which language you are translating and you should take into consideration language peculiarities while translating. For example, we may find an acronym that is completely unfamiliar to us. If it's unfamiliar, first of all, you have to decode them, you have to identify what kind of word is it. Even if it's familiar, you have to uh, know the definition in English language or in Russian or Uzbek language before translating into the target language. So here you may uh, search for its definition from different kind of uh, net sites. This is www.acronymfinder.com and other official translator, translation uh, websites. Sometimes we, we can meet not widely recognized abbreviations. Here we have to decode, then we should translate and give definition uh, in the target language because if it's not known in the target language and in the uh, source language, of course it should, it should uh, uh, fully be given in the text. So we can translate the meaning of the acronym and explain where it comes from. So we provide some information to the reader. For example, uh, when we find an acronym that is not accompanied by the explanation, so we can give some kind of uh, acronym recognized by everyone. For example, some acronyms are very famous. In this case, we may not give explanation uh, of, um, of this approbation because everybody knows. And the famous abbreviations may have their equivalent in the target language. For example, U, UFO and LO in Russia. So, because it's very famous acronym in, and it exists, it, it has its own equivalent in the uh, Russian language, NLO. But in Uzbek, now Madam Uchar Abek, Nuch, Nuch, we have got the same equivalent. So, if the translation translator knows that this is a famous word, they can give equivalent in the target language. Well, it can be NASA. NASA, you see abbreviation of the acronym NASA. NASA is very popular word, so sometimes they live in Uzbek and Russian as NASA, is a translation. And when they are very popular uh, abbreviations, sometimes uh, they also may have their equivalent as AIDS, equivalent Im uh, immunodeficiency syndrome. In Uzbek, it's going to be OIDS, yes? And if we have the same uh, acronym that's very famous in a medical term, we should give uh, existing equivalent in the translation. When we speak about job titles, in uh, English language, they are usually written in, in abbreviated way. Uh, of course, we have to search, make search, and identify uh, Uzbek or Russian versions of abbreviations before giving the translation. Because some abbreviations are written in fully in Uzbek in Russian language or vice versa. Uh, an abbreviation in Uzbek language can be written in English as a one full word. When we speak about the peculiarities of abbreviations, sometimes we can add plural forms with abbreviations. And some exceptions we have got such a, such a word laser, rather they are abbreviations, they are not words. And sometimes they are accepted as a word. They, all of them are capitalized, 
the short wings are capitalized, but there are some exceptions such as laser and radar. Some short wings are very popular and there is no need for translation into the target language. For example, very famous word GPS uh, doesn't need in any translation uh, or to be translated and it should be left without translation. So here, uh, the translator first of all uh, should be clear, uh, should identify uh, the meaning of abbreviation and have to think about different ways. And you have to think very carefully. It's just also to remember not all words are abbreviations in all languages. And the combination of words sometimes make abbreviation. And we have to think very carefully before abbreviating them. And uh, we have to identify or decode the meaning of the uh, abbreviation in the target language. So that was all for today. If you have got any questions, you are welcome. Thank you for being with me.